Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the next lecture in module C0452 Programming Concepts. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the construct of iteration. And iteration allows us to repeat statements placed within a block of code whilst the condition is true. So typically we might have a comparison between two types of data using a comparison operator, whether that's equality or inequality or greater than or less than, or if you're comparing strings, remember to use the equals method. But regardless of what data we're comparing, whatever the outcome of that comparison is, will determine whether we repeat the block of code that we're attempting to repeat or not. So if the outcome is true, then we run the statements inside of our loop. But if the outcome is false, then we don't. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to take a look at different types of iterative statements or otherwise known as loops. So we're gonna have a look at the while loop, the do while loop, the for loop, and the for each loop, okay? And uh, let's just recap on the three main constructs of all object-oriented programming languages. So already we've had a look at the construct of sequence, which states that code is executed in sequential order. So code at the top of the file is going to be executed before code at the bottom of the file. And it's actually executed in sequential order, consecutive order, so it just goes one line at a time down our file, executing in order. Okay, that's the construct of sequence. We've also had a look at selection as well, which allows us to run a block of code just once, providing that the condition is true. But that's different to iteration, which is where we repeat the block of code whilst the condition is true. So with selection, we choose between different blocks of code and we run them once, whether that's if, else if, and else. But with iteration, we tend to have a block of code which we repeat whilst the condition is true. And obviously, if it's not true, then we don't execute it. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the while loop, first of all. And let's just set up a simple example where we want to output this statement three times, okay? So we're just going to keep a record of how many times we've executed our loop, and we're just going to print out how many times it's been executed so far. So in order to do this, we're going to have to combine the constructs and the concepts that we've looked at so far. So in order to keep a track of how many times we've repeated something, we could create a variable to store that number. So you notice the first line here is where we've declared an integer variable, int data type, and the name of the variable is count. And then we're using the assignment operator to assign the value of one to our variable count semicolon, of course, at the end. So count starts at one, okay, it's the very first line. Then we come down to the next line, which is where we have our while loop. And within the parentheses there, the curly brackets, is where we compare the value of count and the value of three. We're checking to see, is the value of count, which is one, is that less than or equal to three? Is that true or false? Well, if you said true, then you'd be correct because one is less than three. Therefore, because the condition is true, we enter the loop and we execute the statements inside it. So you'll notice underneath we've got a pair of braces and uh, we execute that in order. So we print out that this loop has executed once. Okay, we print out the value of count, which is one, and uh, we embed that, we concatenate that in the print line statement, so we see that on the screen. And then finally, the last statement in the loop is where we increment count. So we're gonna see later there's a shorthand way to do this, but 
just uh, using concepts that we're familiar with so far. If we take the right-hand side of the statement, count plus one, the value of count is currently one, so add one to it gives us two, and then we assign that to count. So we update it to two, okay? And then we come back round to the start of the while loop and we test that comparison again. Now that the count has been updated, we check to see is it still less than or equal to three? So the current value of count is two, is two less than or equal to three? Hopefully you said true there, that's correct. Two is less than three, so we enter the loop. And we print out the uh, next value of count. We say the loop has executed now twice, two times, okay? And then we come down to the final statement, count equals count plus one. So the value of count is two. We add one to it, it gives us three, and then we assign it to count. Okay, and then we go back to the start. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern here. And then we test the value of count again. Is three less than or equal to three? Well, it's not less than, but it is equal to. So the condition is still true. And this is gonna be the last time we run it actually. So we enter the loop, it's still true at this current time. And we say this loop has executed three times, okay? Remember we are taking the value of counts each time as it updates, uh, and we are joining it with two string literals just to print it to screen, okay? And uh, that's the print line statement, and then underneath that we increase it again, so uh, three becomes four, we sign four to count, and then we come up one last time and check, is count less than or equal to three? So count now has the value of four. Is four less than or equal to three? No, it's not, is it? It's greater than, so therefore the condition is false, and therefore we don't repeat the code inside our braces. So therefore we would jump down to where that final brace is, and then if there's any code underneath that, we would continue there. Okay, so that is what is happening here. We've got variable initialization. We have to create a variable, and that has two things. Remember, that's got data type and a variable name, and then we assign a initial value to it. Uh, one was where we started. And then the condition in the while loop, that's kind of like selection. We've seen that before with if statements, okay, haven't we? Because each if statement we have to compare two things, have a left-hand side and the right-hand side of an operator, one of those uh, comparison operators. There might be equality, it might be inequality, less than, greater than, okay? Um, so we've seen that before. The new concept is where we keep repeating that block of code, which, uh, as you saw, we execute it until the condition is false. So therefore, the reason why we increase the value of count, not only to keep a track of how many times we've actually repeated the loop, but it's so we can actually get out of the loop at the end. Because if we don't update the value of count, it will always remain one, and one will always be less than or equal to three. Therefore, it will just keep executing and become an infinite loop. Okay, we wouldn't be able to get out of it. So therefore, we have to change that counter variable in some way so that the condition will eventually become false. Okay, so that's the while loop. Let's now go on and have a look at the do while loop, which is similar, but we've just reversed the order in which we compare the values in our condition. So if you have a look at the code here, we're sticking with the same example, trying to print out how many times we've repeated the loop. And so we've got our uh, variable count at the top, which we declare there. We're gonna start it at zero this time. And uh, also if you have a look at the print line statement, you notice there we have got uh, count plus one in brackets there. And that's just a temporary uh, fix so that we see the very, the very first time we print this out, we see that the loop is executed once rather than zero times. There's a reason why we might start counters at zero and that's where we come on to look at arrays because arrays are usually zero, zero indexed. So we have to start at the first element which is element zero. 
that's usually why we do that. So you'll probably see zero used in quite a lot of the examples, just so it's good preparation for when we do come on to look at arrays. So as we start at zero, we need a temporary fix in our print line statement just to increase it. We're not actually assigning uh, one to uh, the, the, the increment of one to our counter variable. Uh, we do that in the line underneath. It's just for the outputs. Okay. So we've established that we've got our variable count starts at zero. And uh, then we start with the keyword do, and then we've got the braces. But notice that the while statement comes at the end of the braces. It actually takes place after we have first run the code inside the loop. Okay, so remember, coming back to our construct of sequence, we execute in sequential order, consecutive order. The, the, the condition is going to be checked at the end of the loop rather than at the start of the loop this time. So does that change the logic in our example? Well, let's see. Let's run it through. So we start at zero and we print out the amended version that we have executed it once. Now, because we've entered the braces, remember there's no check with the do. We go straight into the loop there. So we can guarantee that the loop is always going to execute at least once, in contrast to our while loop where we won't run the while loop, the, the code inside the braces, if the condition is first of all false. Okay, But with the do while loop, that could well happen. We could well have a false condition, which we come to, but because we execute in sequential order, we've already executed the loop. There's no condition, there's no check before we enter the loop. Okay, so it does change the behavior a little bit. Right, so we executed once, we've printed that out, we've increased the value of count, and then we check right at the end, is count less than three? Well, we started at zero, we increased it to one, that's count equals count plus one, the very end of the loop. So uh, count is now one, so therefore that is still true. One is less than three, so therefore we go back to the start of the uh, braces there and we execute again. Uh, that count plus one gives us two, Executed twice now, increase it in the last statement of the uh, do while block there. Count equals count plus one, two. Um, uh, what, sorry, it's, it's one, isn't it? Because uh, one plus one is two. And then we come down to the end of the while loop. Uh, two is two less than three. Yes, it is. So therefore, we go back to the top of the braces, print out the next uh, statement there. And remember, we're doing that temporary fix. Count currently had the value of two, uh, the actual value of two. And we temporarily modify it to say three. And then we come down and actually modify the value of count. We update it to three. And then we come down to the while loop, uh, sorry, the while statement there, and check is count less than three? Well, three is not less than three, it's equal to three. So as we've used less than, the condition is now false. So therefore we don't go back to the top of the braces there. We actually just carry on underneath that uh, while statement. And one last thing to point out is that there's a semicolon uh, after the, uh, the, the comparison there. And that's to prevent the compiler thinking that we're opening up another while loop. Because if you remember, we've got a while loop in the, the previous slide. If we had got code underneath that, the, uh, the compiler could have been confused and thinking we are trying to repeat code underneath this statement where the actual loop is above it. Okay, so that's why we have the semicolon there to differentiate between this while loop where the condition takes place before the braces. Okay, so the do while loop, uh, it does perform in the same way in this instance. Uh, there's a, examples later, we'll come on to them when uh, we use the do while loop to validate user input. So if they get something wrong the very first time, we ask the user to go back and enter again. But in order to check whether they've entered the right value, we have to first get the value. We have to first get that input. So that's usually why we have the input statement within the do while loop and then a check afterwards so that we can evaluate what the entered data is, whether it's correct or not, and whether we need to go back and ask them to enter it again. Okay, but we'll come on to that in a future lecture. 
Okay, so that's uh, do while. And we've got the reminders here. So as you say, uh, no condition to check. So we enter the braces first time. It's always going to run at least once. And uh, remember the semicolon at the end, just so you don't confuse the compiler. OK, so we've had a look at the while loop and the do while loop so far. Let's now go on and have a look at a different way of repeating. And that's the for loop. So we're going to change the order slightly here because you've seen the loop counter been declared outside of the loop. You've seen the condition take place within the parentheses. And you've also seen the increment, the uh, increase of the loop counter take place within the braces. But now we're going to take the variable declaration and initialization from above the loop counter and put it within the for statement here. And we're also going to take the increment, the increase in the value, which is within the braces of our while loop and our do while loop, and put it in the for statement as well. So here we've actually combined all those three things that we're doing in the parentheses here. So the very first part of the for loop is the declaration of the count. Okay, it's still an integer variable. Still going we're gonna start it at zero. And then we've got semicolon, and then we've got our condition, our comparison. So that's where we check to see whether the value of count is less than our desired number of times that we want to repeat. In this case, it's still three. Semicolon, that's our condition. And then the final part, which doesn't have a semicolon, just notice there at the right of the end of it, uh, but it is our increment. And rather than saying count equals count plus one, there's a shorthand way of writing it, and that's count plus plus. That just increases the value of count by one and saves us having to use the assignment operator explicitly. We can just write count plus plus and then it automatically increases it by one there. Okay, so it's just a shorthand way of writing count equals count plus one or any variable. Okay, so that's the for statement. To get a handle on how it executes, let's step it through. Okay, so we're going to start by declaring our counter variable, initialize it to zero. Now, we don't want to come back to this because we don't want to keep reinitializing it to zero. So this part only executes the once, right at the start of the for loop when we're about to run it. Okay, so we start count zero, and then the next step is when we check it. So is count less than three? Is zero less than three? Is that true or false? Well, that's true, zero is less than three. So therefore we execute the loop. We jump into the loop and we execute the code inside the braces. Okay, and then when we finished, we don't have to put the increment within the braces, uh, remember, because that is the next step. That's the final step where we would then jump back to that last part and we would increment the value of count by one. And then that is the loop complete for that part. So then we increase it to one, count was zero, we put it to one, and then we go back and check again. Remember, we don't reinitialize it. Uh, we don't want to keep going back to zero every time. We want to keep our counter variable going. So we don't execute that first part again. We leave that. But we go back to this first step, the condition. And we check that. Is the new value of count less than three? Is one less than three? Is that true or false? Well, that's true. So therefore, we run the code. Okay, and then we go back and we increment count. So it's these three steps that will keep taking place until the comparison is false. Okay, so count was one, we increase it to two, and then we go back to the first step. Is two less than three? It's true. So therefore, we execute the code inside the braces. Once that's finished, once that uh, iteration is complete, we go back and then we increment the counter variable. Two becomes three, and then we check one more time, is three less than three? Well, no, it's not, therefore that's false, therefore we don't run the code inside our for loop. 
Okay, so hopefully you're starting to recognize the patterns there. And as always with all of our loops, uh, once we finish the loop, we then continue with the code if there is any underneath the braces. Okay, so the for loop then, it just combines what we've seen already with the while loop and the do while loop. It just compacts them into the same statement. So those three uh, elements are essential. We need to have some kind of counter variable that we initialize, and then we need to have a comparison, a condition that will compare our counter variable with the number of times that we want to repeat. And then lastly and more and importantly, we need to increase or modify that value of count or whatever variable we use in order that we can then exit the loop. Okay, because otherwise we'll get stuck in an infinite loop. All right, so that's the for loop. And finally, the for each loop is another variation of the for loop, but it's used to iterate through a collection. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to come on and have a look at collections. So I'm just going to set this up for you, and then we'll continue in the next lecture. So the for each loop is a simplified version of the for loop. You still use the for keyword, but we need to declare an object of a class, or if you're looping through a collection of primitive values, you need to have a variable of that type, so that you can say for each one of these items in the collection, we do something. Okay, so that's why we see here, let's say we had an array list of students. For each student in that array list, we want to do something. So in this case, we want to call the print method on each object, each student object within our student array list. So we say we have to declare a temporary variable, an object in this case, of the student class so that we can then use that as like a placeholder for each of the uh, objects, the student objects in our array list. So that becomes our little, um, like a pointer in one way. It's a reference to, it kind of takes on the uh, current item within the array list. So as we go through one at a time, it takes on the, the reference for that object so that we can then call methods on it. Okay, so for each student in the student's array list, we want to print them out. Okay, so there we go, that's the for each loop. So in the next lecture, we'll take a look at creating collections, and then we'll apply the for each loop to those collections so that we can work on them. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the lecture regarding iteration. So thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in the next lecture.